Hey everyone, and welcome to our final 3v3 tier list update for BFA. With just under a month left until the season ends, we felt it's the perfect time to take one last look at where the meta has arrived so you guys can play the best comps during your last push in Season 4 of BFA. But before we get started, if you're as excited as we are for Shadowlands, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment we release all of our awesome upcoming Shadowlands content to stay in the loop and be as prepared as possible for the new season. Alright, back to BFA. To kick things off, we're going to take a look at what changes have occurred in our class tier list. Starting with our S tier, we've got one new entry, with Feral Druids moving up from A to S. As the season has progressed, we've been able to equip more and more corruption, and with players finally reaching close to corruption cap with 125 resistance on their cloaks, some specs have been able to max out their versatility, while still making use of offensive corruptions. Ferals have benefited from this more than most other specs, as they can now equip 6 12% verse amps while still using the mount staff for the added damage and healing. Getting their versatility close to 60% means that ferals are able to deal huge burst damage with Dressed and Reaping Flames, and pairing that damage with their PvP talent Ferocious Wounds to reduce their enemy's health makes ferals a force to be reckoned with in the current meta. And not only does their damage make them deadly, but their healing makes their teams very difficult to kill. Don't be surprised if you even see a Feral out healing their healer from time to time. Ferals can also choose to play with Conflict and Strife as their major essence to become practically unkillable against comps that they previously struggled against, such as Rogue Mage. All in all, Ferals are in an incredibly strong place right now, and you'll see that reflected in our comp tier list later. Moving into the only other change to our class tier list, we see Mistweaver Monks drop down from S to A. The combination of the Cocoon CD nerf and Vitality Conduit's healing being nerfed has made Mistweaver significantly weaker than before. Previously, you'd see a Mistweaver Monk seem to endlessly rotate through a 55 second cocoon, and an iteration of Vitality Conduit which essentially made the target unkillable. With these nerfs, Mistweaver Monk simply lacks the tools to prolong the game into deep dampening without using up all of their mana. Don't get us wrong though, they're still really strong and remain in our A tier. They can just no longer effortlessly take games into heavy dampening and actually have to heal a lot more. All right, next up, we're going to cover the changes to our comp tier list. And if you haven't already guessed it from the class tier list changes, Jungle moves up from S to S+. As previously explained, the increased corruption resistance, which has made Ferals really strong, also impacted Disc Priests, making them incredibly tanky and able to heal pretty much anything you throw at them. Not only that, but the combination of the way they heal through Atonement along with the Feral Druids off healing makes this one of the most durable comps in the game. There are, of course, a handful of comps which do quite well into jungle, such as DHDK Shaman, but the kill potential of jungle means it's able to score kills even against the hardest matchups. Moving on, we've got Mage Lock, which has dropped down from S plus into S. This is mostly due to Mage Lock previously dominating with a Mistweaver alongside them. This comp was able to bring almost any matchup into dampening and work at the highest level with both Fire and Frost Mage. And not only were Mistweavers nerfed, Destro Warlocks also took a nerf to their Bis Azerite trait, Flashpoint, along with their Mastery which ultimately resulted in them dealing less damage. These two nerfs together brought the comp down a notch, although it's still really strong, it's just not quite the monster it used to be. Nowadays Mage Lock is seen more often with a Holy Paladin, but still works quite well with a Monk and Resto Druid. Honestly, we wouldn't even be surprised if the comp worked well with the Disc Briefs, given how strong they've become with all their versatility amps, but that remains to be seen. Next up, we have a comp returning to our list, plotting into our S tier. Demon Hunter, Frost DK, Resto Shaman has recently seen a resurgence on the ladder, which has also been a result of the increased corruption resistance. Demon Hunters are able to stack their gear with a ton of gushing wounds while still making use of double Mythic Raw Den weapons. And with all the time they've had to gear up, most top-end DHs have a second set of gear with versatility amps that they can swap out to against harder matches that kill them in stuns. Examples of this would be Rogue Mage and Jungle. Not only that, but all of the versatility amps have made Resto Shamans pretty much unkillable when they just sit in Ghost Wolf and let Spirit Wolf along with their pack spirit traits do the work for them, while their DPS just sustain themselves with their high self healing. Altogether, this has made DHDK Resto Shaman one of, if not the most durable comps in the game capable of taking most teams into deep dampening before winning on mana. Another new addition to our tier list comes with the recent discovery of Windwalker Mage Holy Paladin. 
Previously, this comp was mostly played with a Mistweaver Monk, and usually opted for a more defensive playstyle. However, the change to playing this with a Holy Paladin has seen it emerge as one of the strongest comps, even topping the NA ladder for a while. While the previous iteration of Windwalker Monk usually struggled with Warlock spell cleaves, the nerfs to Destro along with the ability to stack such high ineffable truth on the Holy Paladin has allowed this comp to shine as one of the most aggressive melee caster comps in the game, capable of dishing out absurd amounts of burst damage while having excellent CC chains via the Mage and Paladin synergy. And on top of its offensive capabilities, much like Demon Hunters who have been able to stack Gushing Wounds and double Mythic Ra Den weapons, Windwalker Monks are now doing the same with Versatility Amps. And with Fire Mages also stacking more versatility than before, this has allowed the comp to have insane kill pressure without sacrificing too much damage reduction, and has brought it to a point where it's tanky enough to beat the Rogue Mage Overlords. The final changes to our S tier see two elemental comps in the form of Ellie Destro and Ellie Mage. This has mostly been a result of the nerf to Mistweaver Monks, which Ellie's generally have the hardest time facing. Looking at each comp individually, the recent trend of Destro Warlocks playing with an Imp has allowed Ellie Destro to become a decent pick into some of the most meta comps, if it's played well. And with all the versatility amps that Fire Mages are using, Ellie Mage has become a lot more tanky while still having brutal damage during its setups. Both comps have been seeing more success with the Holy Paladin as the short cooldown Hodge allows for more frequent setups, but Mistweavers still have their place in the comp, especially when facing opposing casters. All right, that wraps up our changes to our S plus and S comps. If you're interested in checking out the full tier list, it'll be linked in the description below. So be sure to head over to Skillcapped if you want to find out what the best comps are for your class. Keep in mind that we've only included the absolute best meta comps, and so while you may see some weird comps at the top of the ladder like Rhett Mage getting top 10, we choose to focus on the comps that are proven to work by the masses. We've also got a 2v2 tier list refresher coming out in a couple of days, so if you're looking to get your elite sets on some alts, be sure to look out for that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.